Welcome to our town hall focused on campus life, activities, and housing. My name is Nick Board. I use he, him pronouns, and I will be moderating today's town hall where we will share some exciting updates and hope to get many of your campus life and housing questions answered. I want to thank all those who shared questions early in the RSVP and everyone joining today. I will also be keeping an eye on the chat. Our panelists from the Dean of Students Office Student Center and Housing and Residential Life will be sharing updates on the plans for the fall based on what we know today. Much of what you may hear today is guided by science and we look forward to the return of a vibrant campus life this fall as circumstances permit. Here today to talk more about the science and health recommendations that have been guiding our planning is Interim Dean of the College of Nursing and a member of the Campus Public Health Committee, Ramona Benkert. Hey Nick, thank you and good afternoon everyone. Um, I just wanted to start off by really sharing with you that um, Wayne State has since the beginning of the pandemic prioritized health and safety of our community over all else. Um, and to that end, we have been very fortunate to keep our case rates extremely low except for a couple of blips throughout the 14 month pandemic. So please know that you can um, rely on us for the advice and guidance. Um, I know that um, somewhere along my discussion, um, someone will share the link where you can get all kinds of information about what is happening related to coron coronavirus at Wayne State. It's at Wayne State um, forward slash coronavirus if you'd like to look it up, but someone will post the URL for you. Um, before you do come to campus, um, we are urging all students and soon guests to complete what's called our Campus Daily Screener. Um, you can download that from um, a simple app on your, on your phone. Um, I have it on mine. I use it all the time. Um, or you can do it through the website um, where you can just easily click the Campus Daily Screener request. And that simply asks you questions about symptoms, exposure, and traveling recommendations. And then someone from our campus health center will contact you if you answer something that we need to talk with you about. The other thing that we urge all students to do um, and anyone else who's coming to campus is to complete what we call our Warrior Safe Training Course. Um, you can also find that at the WSU Coronavirus page. Um, that provides you with the basics and information regarding coronavirus and all the current CDC guidelines. We're actually in the process now of updating the training, which will be up to date probably about mid-July. Um, we maintain all of the new and sometimes alter a little bit the CDC guidelines. Um, what we are currently doing, for example, is we are requiring that um, all individuals who would like to go indoors of buildings on campus um, to wear masks and to continue to maintain social distancing, even if you are vaccinated, because we aren't requiring anyone at this time to document whether they're vaccinated or not. So we are asking everyone indoors to wear a mask. But for those of you who would like to meet and greet outdoors, you do not need to wear a mask and you can gather on campus. Um, However, one of the ways that we will eventually be able to fully open and be a safe and healthy campus is through vaccination efforts. Um, at this time, we're not requiring a mandated vaccine um, to be on campus, um, but we are really urging it for the safety and for us to be able to be on campus together in a safe manner. Um, we will um, be offering vaccinations to all new students if you would like to. We also do testing on campus. Again, you can find those links at the um, coronavirus website page. Um, you, we, what we really tried to provide with you at the Campus Health Center site and that page is factual up-to-date information that hopefully will override some of the misinformation you're hearing about vaccines. Um, I know it's very frightening to think about them, but we really are encouraging people to really get accurate and complete information about that. The other thing that we discussed actually today at the Public Health Committee meeting was to urge um, anyone new to the campus to watch the vaccine town hall that was put on by the president. And you can find it um, again at our coronavirus page. 
Um, that was really a very helpful town hall with hundreds of attendees. And it also provided a lot of up-to-date, accurate information from actually two of the members of our public health committee, Dr. Paul Gilcore and Dr. Mark Zervos, who were a part of the initial clinical trials for the vaccine. We ask you to do that and really sort of think about updating your um, information. We've learned a lot in these last 14 months, and I do want to reassure you that your health and safety are really the most important thing to us as we transition back to campus and activities this summer and in the fall. Thank you all very much. And I will answer questions later when we, the rest of the panelists speak. Thanks, Ramona. Up next, we have Dr. David Strauss, our Dean of Students, who will provide some updates about student life activities this fall. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, my name is David Strauss, Dean of Students. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I want to let you all know I am so excited to be with you today, and every day is a day closer to when we're all back in person. So I was thinking about today, and then I'm thinking about tomorrow. Guess what tomorrow is? Okay, for any of you baseball fans, tomorrow is the first day that the Tigers Comerica Park can be at full capacity. Opening day, round two. So what does that mean? That means we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, the beginning of the end. And that is the case for us too at Wayne State. So tomorrow in the seventh inning, when they stand and sing, take me out to the ball game, we today can sing the Wayne State victory song, because this fall, we're all going to be back together in person. Now, Dr. Benkert mentioned vaccines. We cannot emphasize enough the importance for our public health to keep Wayne State warriors strong and warriors safe to go out and get vaccinated. We are really excited that we're going to be rolling out another vaccine incentive program. We had one in winter semester for students that were enrolled winter semester, and it was very successful. We're going to roll out another one. And those of you that participated in the one in the winter can participate again, but we also want new folks who are not vaccinated or who got vaccinated since that last program to participate as well. That program is going to kick off next Monday. You'll be receiving an email in your Wayne State email at your Wayne State email address that gives you all the information on how to participate in that vaccine program. But we're going to be giving away everything from a semester of free parking to bookstore gift cards to one card dollars on your one card to a semester of free housing, to a semester of free tuition, undergraduate lower division. So sorry, those of you who may be medical school students, but it'll be credited to your medical school tuition. So we are really excited uh, to uh, present this program to get you all vaccinated. Now, as we look to the fall, while Plans are still being rolled out. You know, as Nick said, as Dr. Ben Kurt said, every day is a day closer. Every day we get closer with our policies and procedures. But I can tell you that as we sit here today, that events without masks can be held outdoors on campus. And student organizations, you can go ahead and reserve outdoor space with the Student Center Reservations Office. Student organization registration for the 21-22 academic year has begun, and the Student Activities Funding Board is accepting applications for funding for events for the 21-22 academic year. We're back. We're back. Orientation Part 2, Brandon Shimon, our coordinator of student involvement, is going to speak about it in a few minutes. I can't wait to see all of you at Festival convocation and orientation part two. The campus activities team is putting together their fall events calendar and warrior football is back and we're all going to be together watching warrior football in the stands. So mark your calendar now Thursday night September 2nd 
is the first home game of the Warrior football season. Now, while we don't know all the policies yet for indoor events, with 11 weeks to go, I can tell you I'm confident that we're, able, we're going to be able to have indoor meetings, programs, and activities. We are providing many opportunities for you to get involved on campus at Festival, which Brandon will talk about. There'll be information about that. Student Organizations Day as well. The key, stay tuned every Sunday in your Wayne State email inbox is the Get Involved email. And that's going to give you the latest information on what's happening on campus. You can always call us at 313-577-1010. You can email us at doso at wayne.edu. Be on the lookout Monday for an email about the new vaccine program. And with that, I can't wait to see you in the fall. Go Warriors. And now I hand it over to Brandon Shimon, our coordinator of student life involvement in the Dean of Students office. Brandon. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Shimon. I'm the coordinator of student engagement. I, I use he, him, his pronouns. And I am super excited to tell you about all the fun stuff we have plan for you come this fall. So uh, with my job, I get to do all the fun stuff on campus. I get to get you involved on campus and that's what I love to do. So with orientation part two, like previous years, um, it will be the two days before classes start on August 30th, that's a Monday and Tuesday, August 31st. Um, we'll be kicking off with some success sessions and which will help you uh, get acclimated with your academic year with the Academic Success Center. Um, in addition, we'll be having some other programming with WSU Athletics and the campus activities team on that day, along with our um, Speak About It session, which talks about more of our consent and Title IX programming as well. On day two, we'll transition into our new student convocation, which is the official welcome um, from the university president and the board as well on that day. And we'll transition right into festival. We'll have um, our hundreds of student organizations tabling uh, and for uh, our departments and schools and colleges as well. In addition, this year, we're gonna also have a community organization fair where you can get involved with our community or organizations in um, the Detroit area as well with that. Um, so check out for a postcard coming to you in the mail in July. Um, but for more information on orientation part two, uh, you should, first of all, go to orientation and they'll tell you more about that then. But if you, you've already gone there, you can also go to go.wayne.edu slash o2 for more information as well. Thanks, Brandon and Dr. Strauss. And now that Dr. Strauss shared a little bit about some of the outdoor event spaces, I'd like to introduce Katie Bolio from the Student Center to talk more about some of the outdoor spaces and the event reservation process. Thanks, Nick. Hi, everyone. Um, as Nick mentioned, I'm Katie Bolio. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the Associate Director of Operations for the Student Center. As students, you breathe life into our campus, especially at the Student Center, and we are so excited for the opportunity to help you host meetings and events of your own on campus again this fall. As Dean Strauss mentioned, the Student Center is currently accepting reservations for outdoor events for this summer, um, and we are accepting reservations for indoor and outdoor events for this fall right now as well. Um, so you can submit your request on our scheduling system, EMS, uh, which you can find by visiting studentcenter.wayne.edu. We have several event spaces of different sizes in the Student Center and around campus, including outdoor spaces such as Gullen Mall and Keith Commons, which we are excited to say is now back online. And we are also happy to share that the lawn area in front of St. Andrews Hall is now available as a new reservable outdoor space. I wanna emphasize that our reservations team uh, is uh, excited to work with you individually to safely plan your event. And, and we encourage you to book a larger space than you think you may need to allow for social distancing guidelines. We wanna do everything that we can to help you plan safe and successful events. Thanks so much. Thanks, Katie. Now I'd like to transition over to some campus housing updates, starting with Nikki Dunham, our Director of Residence Life. Hi everyone, and thanks so much, Nick, for the introduction. Again, my name is Nikki. I'm the Director of Residence Life, and I use she, her pronouns. Hopefully you've heard so far how excited the entire campus community is to welcome you back in the fall. We share your anticipation for campus engagement to get back to the absolutely vibrant and wonderful warrior community that we all love so much. 
We know that a big reason that you choose to live on campus is for the true warrior experience on campus and being fully integrated into our beautiful community. And we hope that what the Dean of Students staff and the Student Center staff have already shared gives you some clear information about the type of community we're anticipating for the fall that will exist on campus in general. So you know about housing and residential life, we have remained focused and we will remain focused and committed to student learning and success. We support our residents by providing safe and inclusive environments where you can focus on your development as a Wayne State warrior. Throughout the next few minutes, many of our team members will talk about how we plan to do this as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. We stay very closely connected to the Health Policy Committee and the Campus Health Center. Both have been tremendous partners for us so far. There's still a lot that we're working on to prepare for your arrival to campus in the fall. Um, but we hope that again, over the next few minutes, we'll be able to bring a little bit of clarity about where we're headed for this next academic year. Part of our safe environments includes physical safety, um, especially as we start to do more in-person, as both Brandon and Katie mentioned, and reinvigorate our campus communities. Uh, we will still, in all of our campus housing buildings, have hand sanitizer and masks available for use. Um, and we are still doing the regular increased cleaning of our community spaces. Circumstances with COVID-19 permitting included those very important vaccine rates. We hope to remove a lot of the plexiglass barriers that are currently in place and a lot of the physical distancing requirements that are in place currently, such as elevator limitations, um, limitations in lounges, all of those different gathering types of spaces. We'll continue to follow the recommendations of the CDC, as well as the Wayne State Health Policy Committee, as we have been for the past 15 months. So as Katie said, you truly breathe life into our community and that's no different for campus housing. We would love for you to call campus housing home. To share more information about options and the application process, I'm going to pass it on to Kelly Thacker. Hi everyone, thanks Nikki. Good afternoon, as Nikki mentioned, my name is Kelly Thacker and I am the Director of Housing and Dining Services and I use she, her pronouns. To share a little bit more about our application process, it is never too late for you to apply for campus housing as we accept applications on a rolling basis. So if you know you wanna live on campus, we would encourage you to apply as soon as possible and complete our application steps. We have all of the steps to apply listed online at our housing website, housing.wayne.edu. And there's a yellow banner up in the upper right hand corner that says apply now. And by selecting that, it will take you to our application steps and it will walk you through each of the things to think about, review, and decisions that we would encourage you to make before you start the application itself. Once you complete and review all that information, you'll then go online to our housing application and work to review our legally binding housing license agreement terms. We really want you to know and understand what you're agreeing to when you sign up for a housing app, when you sign the housing application and request to live on campus. So please take a look, review those housing, li housing license agreement terms. Then after that, you'll complete some application questions telling us a little bit more about what you're interested in. We ask you to think about who you might want um, or the different characteristics you might want from a roommate. So are you a person who likes to study early or you like to stay up later to do your schoolwork? So just some things to think about and prep you as you then decide where you want to live on campus. The last step is for you to complete a $125 application fee payment that is non-refundable so please make sure before you make that payment that you understood the terms and you are committed to living on campus with us. Immediately once you pay that $125 application fee, you're then gonna be able to go online and select your assigned room. We really um, like using the self-selection process which gives you the decision-making power in where you want to live. For those of you who are under the age of 18, one thing to remember is that your parent or guardian will also need to complete the housing license agreement. You add in their email and they receive a unique link. And once they submit and sign off on that, then you are able to go online and select a room. 
a little bit more about our self-selection process. Think about it like selecting a seat to a concert or a seat on a plane or a train. Um, hopefully something that we're all gonna enjoy doing in the very near future is getting back into those different uh, venues and events. That's similar to our housing room selection process. You're going to be able to go online and see what spaces are available and select from those available spaces. If you're interested in living with another person, make sure that you know whether they've already selected a room or if you both need to select a space and then you'll communicate with each other to go online and, and become roommates by selecting the same space through the self-selection process. We also do have, through our Canvas orientation site, the opportunity for students to engage and interact and get to know some potential roommates. So explore that option as well if you, st if you still don't know or are thinking about um, looking for a roommate. If you aren't able to pick the room that you want initially or get with the roommate you want initially, do not worry. We have a room change process that is ongoing from now until midnight on July 9th you are able to change your room one time per day, each and every day between now and that July 9th deadline. New rooms and new options will continue to become available on a daily basis, so we would encourage you to continue to go online and look at those available spaces. We do have a variety of different housing options, and we also have open a limited number of spaces for freshman or first year students in our Anthony Wayne Drive apartments. So we would certainly encourage you to go on, apply, and then review those available spaces. Another really exciting thing that our colleague's gonna talk about here in a minute is the opening of Chatsworth and our FIRE community, our first year residential experience community. We are so excited to open that building this fall, newly renovated and launch the FIRE program. So we're really hoping that our first year students who are thinking about living on campus explore that opportunity and option and you'll hear more in just a few minutes. The other unique housing option that we're providing this upcoming year is the opportunity for students to select a large single room in Gafari. And what a large single room is, that is a double room in which only one student is assigned. So you get all of the space um, and amenities of a double room, but you are the only person assigned to that space. So certainly think about that if you are interested in living by yourself, but want a little bit more room, we do have that large single option. A few important dates and deadlines to keep in mind is related to our cancellations. We have a June 30th cancellation deadline, and what that means is students, for any reason, can request to cancel up until June 30th. If you apply after June 30th, you then have 14 days after signing the housing license agreement in order to request to cancel. So June 30th is a really important date. And after that date, if you submit a cancellation, we do utilize the cancellation terms within the housing license agreement to review and make a decision about your request. As Dean Strauss had mentioned, it's really important to continue to monitor your Wayne State email, and we will be sending reminders about that June 30th cancellation deadline, as well as move-in information and other updates as we get closer to move in later in August. So please continue to monitor that email account. The last thing I wanted to share with all of you is some of the exciting new uh, dining options that we have opening this fall. We are bringing uh, several new dining options into the Student Center as, long, as well as along Anthony Wayne Drive. So we're really excited to have more new and different dining options opening this fall. Also for any student who has a meal plan, whether you purchase a voluntary meal plan or live in one of our residence halls where you will have a meal plan, we're going to be taking 25% of your warrior dollars attached with that meal plan. And we're gonna be turning those into one card dollars for both the fall and winter semesters. And we really think that that's going to provide more flexibility and variety as you, dine with us on campus, and we want you to utilize your meal plan to its full extent. So we're excited to have those options, as well as opening Golden Greens and Towers Cafe. So we will have two all-you-can-eat locations for our students this fall. Next, I'm going to turn it over to 
Rodrina Moore to talk more about some of the programming and our fire community in Chatsworth. Hello, as Dr. Thacker said, my name is Rodrina Moore. I am the Associate Director for Residence Life and I use she, her pronouns. We are really excited to open our newly renovated Chatsworth Suites with four and six person suite options. We are kicking off a new initiative called FIRE, which is our first year residential experience program. Um, we want to invite all of our first year students into this building to um, create an intentional community for them. We recognize that first year students need a, um, a, a specific experience as they, in, as they become first year students at Wayne State. And so we've created an experience around four tenets, which is belongingness, equity, access, and learning. Um, we're super excited to get our first year students here onto campus and get them connected to different campus partners, to our staff, our community directors, our resident advisors, and our residential peer mentors. We use a residential curriculum to guide most of our programming. Um, and our goal is to help educate first year students and students across campus um, outside of the classroom. We um, are guided by four pillars, academic success, and engagement, social justice and equity, personal responsibility, development, and warrior pride. And our goal is to make uh, more conscious, local, and um, worldwide people after they leave here, Wayne State University. Um, we know that there have been a lot of questions about our guest policy, so we are looking to reinstate our guest policy um, and we're also looking to um, have provide more in-person programming for the folks that live on campus. So we're super excited about that and are looking forward to engaging um, next year. So we know that you want to know more about moving. So I'm going to transition over to Nikki Dunham. All right, very good. So to add to Kelly's important dates list, we are furiously planning for your arrival to campus housing. Um, so a few dates for you to keep in mind here. We will welcome all of the FIRE or Chatsworth residents to their new home on Thursday, August 26th. All other first year students will be welcome to campus housing on Friday, August 27th. All returning residents to campus will move in on Saturday, August 28th. We're still looking forward to being together for traditional events such as festival, as Brandon already mentioned, also getting together for resident orientation and a lot of other different welcome activities as we welcome you back to campus housing and also back to Wayne State's beautiful campus in Detroit. You'll get a lot more information from us about move-in sometime in July as we continue to plan. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to open it up for some of our questions that were submitted as um, in the RSVP and then also in the chat. So first I'd like to bring Dr. Strauss back up. And this is a two-part question. What advice do you have for new students on making connections and getting involved on campus? And how might your advice change for a non-traditional student who's coming back to college after some time away from the classroom? Hey, thanks for asking that question, Nick. Um, so for students, a couple of things you can do. Festival on August 31st is a great way to learn about getting involved in uh, the many student organizations that we have on campus, as well as community, uh, community service opportunities and the different university departments. So that would be the first thing I would say is check out Festival. Number two, you'll be getting information in your wasted email about Student Organizations Day, another way to get involved. Third, attend events. Attend events that you learn about in the Get Involved email. Go up to folks, introduce yourself, ask how you can get involved on campus. You'll see many of the student leaders at those events. Fourth, just uh, send us an email, doso at Wayne, and say, hey, I'm interested in getting involved in this or I'd like to learn more about that and we'll help connect the dots for you. 
that segues into your second question, which is student uh, students that may not have been back on campus for a while would like to get involved. Again, we can help you make those connections. If you're not able to get to first of all, if you're not able to get to student org day, if you're not on campus much, let us know. And, uh, and we will help connect the dots for you. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, but many of these events are also gonna be streamed. So the new student convocation is gonna be streamed. Uh, so you'll be able to watch it online. And it'll also be recorded so you can go back and watch it. The keynote speaker that's part of orientation part two is going to be streamed. And we're still going to have virtual activities. One of the things we learned from the pandemic is students did enjoy having the opportunity for virtual engagement. So we are going to keep that up. Awesome. Thank you. And next, I want to bring Brandon back. Can you talk about how many some of those amazing registered student orgs Dr. Strauss talked about are and some of the variety of interests they cover? Yeah, so we typically have over 500 organizations on campus. As of now, since we're in the registration period, we have just over 100. But if you go to doso.wayne.edu, you can check out a list of last academic year's um, registered organizations. And if you also go on the Get Involved website, you can check a complete list of our current active registered organizations. But these organizations cover um, various topics, so academic-based, hobby-based, religious, social, we have fraternities and sororities. And if there's not an organization that fits you or if you want to maybe restart an organization, all it takes is yourself and one other registered student to create an organization. And all that information is on the Get Involved website, which is getinvolved.wayne.edu. All right. And then I know earlier you talked about the return of festival. But can you talk more about any changes to the program so student orgs can start preparing for that big day? And if not, can you um, let them know and there might be, you, know, you might expect to have some more updates? Yeah, sure. So festival is probably everyone's most fun uh, experience on campus. So we know there's a lot of questions around that. Like mentioned earlier, it will be in person. We have the opportunity to expand festival since we have a bit more ground space on campus now. So we'll be utilizing not only Gullen Mall and Fountain Court, but also Keys Commons um, and that sidewalk along um, on campus as well. Um, so within that, there will be um, hopefully opportunities for more organizations to get involved. I did mention a community service organization fair as well, um, along with our departments, learning communities and other uh, schools and colleges as well hosted there. So more information will be coming out to your emails for student organizations. So we're gonna be encouraging you to continue to register your organization if it's not already. And if you are an incoming student um, or potentially already a student that didn't have opportunity to come to festival last year, we're going to invite you both to that day on August 30th and 31st um, to attend and to be signed up and get involved on campus. Thanks, Brandon. And as Brandon talked more about some of the planning, I'd like to bring Katie back up as many student org leaders wrote in asking when they can start reserving for the fall. Can you share more about the event booking timelines and maybe some best practices you've learned over the past few months for planning events as we return to campus? Sure, Nick. Uh, so we are now taking reservations for the, the fall through EMS, our event scheduling system, which can be located at studentcenter.wayne.edu. Uh, we continue to follow university event guidelines for safety, which, as Dr. Benkert mentioned earlier, may be different from state and CDC restrictions. Um, so as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we encourage you to reserve a larger space than you think you might need to allow for social distancing. Um, so, for example, if you're already familiar with the student center, um, if you think you might need one of our Hillbury rooms, which can be combined, uh, we encourage you to reserve two rooms or, or Hillbury A and B. So just larger spaces, um, knowing that we'll want to maintain some sort of distance, um, keeping uh, an eye on what that might look like for the fall. Um, we have also worked closely with campus partners, including FPM Custodial and Wayne State Catering, on additional steps to set you up for success as you plan for safe in-person events. Um, and we will discuss those with you on more of an individual basis, event by event, um, as we work out your details. Thanks, Katie. And up next, there were a lot of questions surrounding vaccines that came in. So I'd like to have Dr. Becker come back. Um, can you share, or there were several questions wanting to know if our vaccines required to be on campus this fall? And if so, is there a vaccine I should try to get over another? 
Um, at this time, we haven't decided fully um, whether we will have a required vaccine, but right now there isn't um, a vaccine mandate, uh, but we will know more around July 15th. Um, there isn't one that our public health committee recommends over another. They all have um, equal efficacy and um, effectiveness for um, individuals that have used them. It's somewhat your preference as to whether you prefer a, a two dose with the Molina and the Pfizer or a single dose with the J&J. &J. Um, so it, there isn't really one that we recommend over one versus the other. Awesome. And then a few people wrote in asking what COVID positivity rates have been like on campus. Can you share a bit more about that and where they can learn more about our metrics? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned before, if you go to the Wayne State forward slash coronavirus, you can click on our ongoing metrics. But um, we've been tracking our metrics since um, last summer, um, almost uh, about a year now. And our metrics have, we rate our positivity rate over a three-day versus a seven-day average. And we've pretty much stayed somewhere between um, a three to a five percent with real clear dips um, as they've come along. Like last week, we had a zero percent positivity rate on campus, although that has to do with the fact that there aren't a lot of people on campus, to a high um, positivity rate of about 8.7, which was right before the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, it's fluctuated, but we do track that every week, report it every week, as well as the number of cases of students versus employees on campus who have had COVID that we've identified through the Campus Health Center. But please use that website. It's up to date, every, updated every Monday at noon. Thank you. And mm -hmm. up next, I'd like to bring Dr. Thacker and Nikki Dunham back. As there were several questions um, wanting to know what the quarantine procedure and housing was like. Sure. So as I mentioned before, we continue to work really closely with the Campus Health Center. Um, they receive and review all of the campus daily screeners. So it's really, really important um, that everybody continues to fill out those daily screeners because those are reviewed by uh, health professionals that then make the decision on whether a student needs to either quarantine or isolate. Um, so, Kelly, maybe if you want to talk a little bit about what happens when that decision is made. Sure. So if we receive information from the Campus Health Center that a student needs to quarantine or isolate, a member from the housing staff, if that individual lives on campus with us, will contact the student and then work with them to figure out or make arrangements to see if they need to stay on campus or if they plan to spend that quarantine or isolation off campus. So we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one follow up and communication with those students directly from the housing office to make sure that we're able to accommodate them and get them the space they need for their quarantine or isolation period. We do then work with the Campus Health Center and the student stays in contact with the Campus Health Center staff throughout their quarantine or isolation and then a final determination is made when that student can be released by the Campus Health Center and then housing staff worked again to follow back up with them and make sure we get them back into their assigned room. Nick, can I just add something else really quickly here? Absolutely. Um, now that I mentioned the campus daily screener, um, you know, and talking about how the Campus Health Center receives those, but we're really excited to announce today that there is a daily screener in development for folks that want to visit Wayne State that do not have an access ID or are not direct Wayne State community members. Um, so we're really excited for that to roll out for the campus community very soon. But what that means specifically for students that live in housing is that we will look to open up the guest policy again. Um, so as a reminder, our guest policy pre-pandemic um, was that each resident is allowed to have two guests with them um, at, at any time. They just need to be registered at the front desk. So again, as this technology is developed and we figure out how we're going to share that with people to be able to fill out the daily screener if they are not directly affiliated with Wayne State, um, but we are hopeful that um, we will be able to implement some changes for our summer residents um, by the end of this month. So that's a really exciting thing and I'm sure a question that a lot of students have right now. So I just wanted to interject really quickly and, and make sure there was some clarity on that. Yeah, I appreciate you for bringing that up because there were plenty of questions in the chat and submitted about that. And I'm sure many students will be very happy about that. 
And up next, I'd like to bring Rodrina back as a student in the RSVP asked, what are some of the advantages of living on campus? Yeah, so we believe that students that live on campus have a sense of belonging and are connected are more successful. So we'll say academic success is one thing. I think there's an opportunity to make connections with people that you live with. Um, relationship, you build relationships with strangers and you get to learn about people and their cultures and um, folks that are different from you. I think uh, there's an opportunity to build lasting relationships. One of my college roommates, I was in their wedding one year um, and we're still friends and I won't tell you how long it's been since I've been a college student, but um, relationships is two. I think access to campus resources. Um, we connect folks to all type of people on campus. It's convenient here. Um, we'll have some uh, campus partners in the buildings connecting. Um, help supporting with programming and different things like that. We have a 24 hour, seven day a week front desk. So it, someone's always there to help you and support you. Um, and I would say lastly, there is no commute. Um, everything is right here and available for you. Awesome. And now I'd like to bring Nikki back um, as there's been a lot of questions as well about some of the unique features and advantages of the FIRE community. Can you talk more about that? Oh, I sure can, and I'll be very excited about it. So we are still really excited about Chatsworth and our first year residential experience on campus. Um, one of the really great advantages of this community is having very direct and in-building access to campus offices that are committed to supporting you in your success as a Wayne State Warrior. So offices like the Office of Student Financial Aid, the Study Skills Academy, um, study tables, all of those types of things um, will have direct hours in Chatsworth Suites. Um, so there's no more, you know, like trucking out in the snow in the middle of the winter to get to a study session. A lot of those things will be brought directly to you, which is um, an amazing level of support that we're really excited to um, partner with a lot of different um, uh, offices or our colleagues on. Um, there will also be many events uh, through the resident advisors or any of our peer mentors that are focused exclusively on transitioning to college. Um, so while Brandon talked a little bit about orientation, uh, both parts one and two, we know that that's a really big part of this transition, um, but that transition doesn't just last you know, throughout the first week or two of being present on Wayne State's campus. So in the FIRE community, you will have a very unique opportunity to be in community with other students who are having many of the same experiences that you are throughout your entire first year at Wayne State. Um, and that's incredibly beneficial. Uh, it's also worth mentioning right now that um, for the FIRE community specifically, um, if cost is a concern to you, because we understand that living in Chatsworth Suites is just a little bit more expensive than some other options on campus, we are offering an $825 per semester need-based scholarship for any students who choose to live in the FIRE community. Um, I want to reiterate again that this is a need-based scholarship, so it would be reviewed in partnership with the Office of Student Financial Aid. Um, and certainly, if you have any questions about that scholarship specifically, you can email housing at wayne.edu and we'll get you to the right person. Um, but we're offering this so that we can remove barriers for any first-year students who are really wanting to be in this unique community for next year. Thanks, Nikki. Um, in the live chat, there was a question wanting to know if what first year refers to. Does that include transfer students who are in their first year at Wayne State? For the FIRE community specifically, it only includes true first time at any college um, students. So we're really trying to build a unique community. However, we do have a transfer living learning community, which you can find out more information about on our website as well. All right, and then one more question I'm gonna ask before we switch over to another panelist is, when you talked about move-in um, and the different days and who were eligible for those days, what do you mean by a returning student? If you're a second year academic student, but it's your first year in campus housing or first real year on campus, what would their move-in date be? 
Yeah, that's a great question and something that I know a lot of different folks have been talking about across Wayne State's campus. Um, for the purposes of movement and what we want to provide to our students, we would consider those um, any student who is their first time living on campus. We know that you missed out on a lot of the very traditional type of activities that would have existed had you um, had the pandemic not been happening and you chose to live on campus last year. Um, so we really want to bolster that up and make sure that you are um, you know, really getting a good experience when you first come to Wayne State. So um, again, those dates were, um, for move-in, all the Fire or Chatsworth uh, community members would move in on Thursday, August 26th. Um, any first-time residents to campus will be welcome to campus housing on Friday the 27th, and then all other students will move in on Saturday the 28th. Thanks, Nikki. Now I'd like to bring Dr. Thacker back up. Um, there, er, there we go. Uh, there we go. There's Kelly. Um, a question came in um, saying that we heard campus is opening up for in-person tours soon. Um, will we be able to do the same for housing with an in-person tour? And are we able to tour Chatsworth? Great questions. And as you've heard many of the panelists talk about, we are so excited to see people on campus and provide in-person opportunities and experiences. And tours are one of those things that we are going to be, again, restarting in person. So starting next Tuesday, June 15th, there will be the option for people to select an in-person tour. And that could be of any of our buildings, including Chatsworth. So we do ask that people make a reservation online for the tours. And and once you get to that uh, online form, you'll have the option to select either virtual or in-person. We will still offer the virtual option as well for those of you who may be out of state or a little bit further driving distance away, but we will also have the in-person option available. And that will be available starting tomorrow online. Thanks, Kelly. Um, also, now that there were some of the advantages living on campus shared, there were quite a few questions wanting to know if there was a deadline to apply. And then also if students might not want to live on campus this fall, can they apply later or for the winter semester? Sure, certainly. So no, there is no housing deadline. We continue to assign students and students continue to select their spaces on a rolling basis. So it is never too late to apply. And we just encourage you to go online and complete that application. The different room types will become more limited throughout the summer. So if there's a certain type of room that you really want to, to select, we'd encourage you to apply as soon as possible so that that is still an option for you. And then related to the second part of the question, Nick. Yeah, um, so if a student might not want to live on campus this fall, can they apply for the winter semester separately? Yes, they can. And we will open that application in mid-November 2020 for the win sorry, winter, sorry, winter 2022 in November of 2021. So in a few months from now. So that winter application is not open, but it will open in November. So continue to, to monitor our housing website. We will have information when that application becomes open and then students can apply and then uh, we'll work with them to make an assignment for the winter 2022 semester. And then I have one more question for you while I have you up. Um, there have been quite a few comments in the chat and also submitted wanting to know how you might add a dining plan um, to your room assignment. Can you talk a bit more about that process? Certainly. So for students who live in a building with a meal plan requirement, so that would be our residence halls and then first year students in the Thompson, your meal plan will actually be added to your student account later in the summer and you'll get a notice in July and you'll have a limited amount of time to go online and change that meal plan if the one you initially selected during your housing application is not the one that you want to keep. So when you complete that housing application there is a question about a meal plan and again for those students who are required to have a meal plan that will get added to your account and then you will get information on how you can choose to change that. 
for students who are living in non-meal plan required locations, so that's upper class students in the Thompson, and then students in Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments and University Towers Apartments, you can go online and purchase a meal plan through our dining website, our Campus Dish dining website. And on there, you can select the meal plan or create your own meal plan. So you can select from one of the five that we already have made, or you can choose your own, and you can do a combination of block and warrior dollars and create your own meal plan for the semester. So for the students who go online and purchase those, um, that is you're purchasing only one semester of a meal plan at a time and you would have the opportunity in the winter semester to then change that meal plan. So you can go to our uh, Wayne State dining website and find more information there. Thanks Kelly. I'd like to bring Brandon back up um, as a student in the chat just ask if a student who is choosing online only classes for the fall, um, can they still join student organizations and be involved on campus? Yeah, so regardless if you're taking online only classes or a mix of in-person and online classes, you are a Wayne State student and you're eligible to partake in any of the programming that student organizations or any other um, departments and offices are hosting. Um, I would just suggest that you reach out to the student organization uh, main contact person to ensure that you can still partake in their programming um, if it's on in person or online just to make sure that uh, they know that you're still interested in attending uh, their events and meetings and all that information is on the get involved website so as well and how to, how to contact the student organization as well on the get involved.wayne.edu website thanks brandon and i'd like to bring nikki back for a few move-in related questions um, so there have been a few questions in the chat about move-in helpers. Um, one student is moving in in July. Are they still limited to having one move-in helper at their time of check-in? Uh, so currently our, our move-in procedures are staying as they had for both the winter and the past fall and that you'll have to register your move-in helper beforehand. Uh, but we're really hopeful that with the development of this new campus daily screener for folks who are not affiliated with Wayne State, and as you know, the university starts to open up a little bit, that we will be able to welcome back many more helpers um, for you to make your your room on campus really feel like home, because we know that that's a big part of it. And then, as your team is working hard planning fall move-in, um, move-in is usually like a big celebration. Um, with a lot of family members coming in to help. Is that something you're planning for the fall and trying to make happen? Oh, absolutely. And it will be a bigger party than you have ever experienced before because like I've said, and like everybody has reiterated, we cannot wait to have you back on campus. Awesome. I appreciate you for answering that. Um, and then I would like to bring back Dr. Thacker And so there have been a few questions wondering about payment deadlines for housing and um, if students can use financial aid and scholarships for their housing. Sure, all good questions. And we encourage students who have questions specifically about their financial aid or financial aid packages to reach out to the financial aid office directly. Uh, they are going to be able to best assist you in kind of looking at what your tuition is going to cost and then any other um, costs that you may have. And those would include living on campus so that housing costs and dining meal plan costs. So we'd encourage you to reach out to them. There may be certain restrictions on scholarships or aid that you receive that may or may not pay for different things at the university, but all housing and dining charges do get posted to your Wayne State student account. Um, and then you can work with financial aid to determine if there's any restrictions um, related to, to what that can pay for you. And I do just want to mention again, Nikki talked about the FIRE scholarship. So we are really excited to be able to offer that need-based scholarship to our first-year students who uh, select to live in Chatsworth. So I'd certainly encourage people to think about living there and taking us up on that need-based scholarship opportunity. Thanks, Kelly. And just before we wrap up, I would like to bring um, Nikki and Rodrina back as there have been some questions about um, roommates and if you're going in blind or a roommate is just self-selecting into your room, what are some helpful tips to start off a positive roommate relationship? 
I would start with communication is key. Um, so uh, I would recommend that talking to your roommate about your likes and dislikes is very important. We have a roommate agreement that you fill out with um, your, the people that you will live with for the fall um, and you get some support from your resident advisor to talk through all of those things that are like quirks for you, things that you don't like, what time you wake up in the morning, when can you have guests, when should you not have guests. When do you like to study different things like that? And so I think it'll be really, really important for students to be honest about that thing um, when they're having those conversations so that um, everything will be on the table up front and you'll be able to work through whatever you need to work through because you have it written down. Nikki, what would you, would you like to add? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add a, a couple of, I guess, um, points of advice that I always give to students. And that is, um, first and foremost, absolutely the communication piece. Um, but keep in mind that some of those relationships don't just magically appear overnight. Uh, be patient with your roommate pair. Um, you know, listen to what your roommate is telling you about what they like or dislike and how they want to use their room and all of that good stuff as well. Um, but I think it's also worth noting that Although you may become friends with your roommate and may become really great friends with your roommate, things don't always work out that way, although we hope that they do. Um, but living with somebody is very different than becoming somebody's best friend. Um, so I would just keep that in mind as you enter into this new relationship in your life, um, being your college roommate. All right. And then our last question for Nikki before we sign off is there have throughout this whole presentation and um, in the RSVPs, there were quite a few questions about move-in. Um, as you're working to finalize the details, when can residents expect to receive more updates and where might they find them? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we'll provide very direct updates to everybody that has an active housing license agreement for the fall. Um, sometime probably in mid-July, we need a few more weeks here to really get things solidified and in place so that we can clearly communicate with you. So you'll get that through email. So another reminder to always check your wayne.edu email. Uh, but then you'll also be able to find any move-in updates on the housing.wayne.edu website as well. All right. Thank you, Nikki. And a big thank you to all of our panelists and all of you who have joined us today, as well as submitted questions in advance. Um, we were Really glad to get your questions answered and share some exciting updates like our vaccine incentive program that kicks off next Monday. Um, we know that the science and vaccines are really guiding our ability to open up campus and have um, a vibrant fall that we all really want. Um, and so I wanna thank everyone for their time again. And if you would like to learn more about housing, move in, things like that, you can always visit housing.wayne.edu and we'll be kicking off the first week of July with a webinar series to help you prepare for move-in. And so stay tuned for more information on that. Thanks again and have a